So the first method that was actually developed that was useful was actually the core method by Garnier Oscar Thorpe Robson. It was developed in the 90s. And it is it's quite easy to understand, and it's the basis for most methods later. Uh, and it depends on amino acid properties, as I showed first one. However, it also takes influence, influence of a neighboring residues. So you look at the window residues around it. And that is important for you to have specific patterns for helix capping, turns, etc. Et et so, so on. So how do you include this, this information? I will discuss it next. And as I told you before, the performance is up to about two thirds correct. So basically, what you do is you, you want to predict the secondary structure of a central residue in a window. So take a window or maybe something between 11 and 25 large, and you basically calculate this, this probability that the central residue is in a certain secondary structure element given that you have um, I mean another amino acid in position one that is of a special type. So, basically, so how much, so what is the probability that you have a central residue as a helix if the first residue is an alanine, or the first residue is cysteine? And then you sum up all these probabilities over the entire window. So, you, and then you end up with three values, one for the probability to be in high helix, one to be in sheet, one to be in a loop region. So you end up like prediction like that. So in, it's actually not uh, uh, that bad. You predict sheets here and there, but you can see there are also some problems with the prediction that it particularly single residue to be in sheet in the middle is not very likely. And this mix of here is sheets between each other is not very likely either. So in general, there was a problem when we saw in 1990 that the secondary structure predictions was too short to have a 6 5 actually. It was a pretty bad beta sheet, the helix was better. And uh, that's why people need wanted to have something better, more useful. 